What I'd like to do is present some of the information that will hopefully answer some questions about what is happening at the volcano. And I can anticipate that we're not going to answer all your questions with great clarity and specificity, but we'll do our best. As you know from the Pahoa situation, there's just a lot of uncertainty that surrounds how a volcano behaves. I want to acknowledge my colleagues in the audience, some of whom I think you remember from Pahoa, uh, Steve Brantley and Janet Babb and Lopaka Lee, or in the back corner. They uh, will be sticking around after the formal session uh, next to some posters with information for further one-on-one -on -one discussion. So let's go ahead with some slides on, on the update about what's going on at Kilauea. First of all, uh, many of you may have been tracking this information. We've had six separate fissures open up in the last, in the first 24 hours of this eruption. And by fissures, we mean straight line, linear zones of eruptive activity that open along a crack. We also, you might also might hear us call them vents, fissure vents. The important takeaway is that we expect more of these to open as the, the dike or the uh, molten material that's rising towards the surface intersects more of the surface and the eruptions from each of these fissure vents might last longer than what we've seen to date. Currently these fissures have opened and they've been active for maybe a few hours or more and then they've been shutting off. So it's uh, highly likely that further ones will activate and be uh, uh, emitting lava for longer periods of time. The activity has been low enough level, which is not to diminish the impact, but it's not producing extensive lava flows yet, and that's just because there's not enough molten material coming out of the ground. Uh, but in the future, if that eruption rate increases, then we would expect lava flows to be produced and move further away from the vents in the downslope direction. Another important message for tonight is that the the arrival of new magma into this portion of the rift zone, which we call the lower east rift zone, is continuing. That's what is, I mean by magma intrusion is continuing. There's still molten material being added to the reservoir below the surface that is capable of feeding these eruptions at the surface. And we know that from two lines of evidence. We're still seeing earthquakes in the region, and you're probably still feeling some. Well, today was an exceptional day for that. Also, we have some uh, instruments that are measuring the motion of the ground, and the ground is still moving in directions that are consistent with more molten material coming into that reservoir. Another important thing you've already heard about is that there are very high levels of sulfur dioxide and other volcanic gases coming out of these fissures, and that's to be expected because these gases are dissolved in the magma, and when the magma reaches the surface, just like the bubbles in your champagne or coke, they come out and blow downwind. Today, uh, we had a, a series of strong shocks, and uh, it's very likely that we'll see more in the coming days to weeks as the volcano basically adjusts to this intrusion or motion of magma underground that has been going on now for some time. Next slide. This map uh, it shows in the dotted line the, the region where we've been seeing the elevated earthquake activity for some time now, since April 30th. And the, if you followed these earthquakes on our website, you saw that they marched slowly to the northeast. And that slow progression was, was reflecting the slow motion of magma in the rift zone below ground as it moved to the northeast. Uh, we've had a request to turn the lights down, if that's possible. I think we have this figure on the poster in the back. Later, we can look at it up closely. Uh, but what you'll notice about this, thank you, is that the zone starts on the left-hand side right at the Pu'ua'o vent. And what you may remember on Monday is that there was a large collapse of the Pu'ua'o vent. The summit, the crater, which had been uplifting and swelling for many weeks, fell in and created a deep void. And all of the molten material that had been stored below Pu'ua'o basically drained into the rift zone and down the rift zone towards this portion of the rift zone. And as it did so, it was making earthquakes, deforming the ground, and now we have no more lava visible at Pu'o'o because it's all coming down rift. Next slide. This is the map that you've seen some versions of. I noticed there's one on the wall, a better one over here. The little dots that are uh, orange dots, thank you, are the locations of the six separate fissure vents that have opened since the start of this activity. 
They haven't been completely progressive. They've bounced around a little bit. Uh, but they all represent little fingers of magma that are coming up from the dike that's a greater volume below surface. And I understand from a text that just came in before uh, I began speaking that right now only the sixth fissure, which is at the far eastern end, uh, is really actively producing spatter. But during an overflight earlier today, uh, I saw several of the other fissures still producing a little bit of spatter and lots of fume. Next slide. These fissure vents are opening in a predictable, or I should say a, a, a repeatable sequence of events, and some of you may have witnessed this. First, we are getting these ground cracks that can widen over the course of hours, and then we start to get steam, hot steam coming out of the cracks, and then we start to smell or detect sulfur dioxide, volcanic gas, as the magma gets even closer, and then eventually it breaks through the surface. In the next slide, oops, we'll come up to a picture of that in a minute. Uh, but this is, this is the, per the precursory of behavior, basically, before magma is breaking the surface. All right, the next slide talks about earthquake activity. In the past five, three days, we've had a number of large earthquakes on the south flank of Kilauea Volcano. May I borrow your laser pointer? Thank you. So just to orient you, here's the summit of Kilauea Volcano. We are actually just off the map here to the northeast. And these are the locations of, of the largest earthquakes that we've been detecting and feeling in the last three days. Uh, here's the 6.9 that happened just early this afternoon. I'm sure many of you felt that. Uh, it was just three miles deep below the south coast of the island. All of these earthquakes today represent the response of the volcano to this ongoing intrusion of magma in the East Rift Zone. Basically, you can imagine that the, mo the movement of great volumes of molten material through that passageway that's several miles deep is stressing the volcano. It's, it's pushing on the sides. It's also perhaps providing room for the volcano to collapse a little bit. And all of that stress is relieved in large earthquakes. So in some ways, these are not unexpected. The size of today's event is a little uh, dramatic. And because of the large earthquakes, we expect to have aftershocks continuing for days and may, perhaps even weeks. So please don't be surprised if you feel more earthquakes. Next slide. Here's a photograph of what happens at the uh, tail end of one of the crack development events. First crack, steam and fume, and then lava spattering. Um, through the fissure vent and the spatter falls on either side and builds a, a spatter rampart, a little cone of debris. This isn't very vigorous activity. These lava fountains aren't, aren't going very high, um, but the impact is severe nonetheless. Next slide. Here's another shot of fissure number three as it was developing on the side of the road yesterday. Next slide. And here's a shot in the evening showing a spatter coming out of one of the new fissure vents. So to recap, because uh, I know you have some questions, we've had six separate little fissures form in a short area over the course of this eruption to date. We expect more, and it's possible, if not likely, that effusion or eruption of lava from these may become longer in duration, produce more volume, and actual lava flows that move downhill away from the fissure vents. We're still seeing accumulation of material, so this event is not over. Uh, we've talked about the gas hazard and uh, that that is real. When I did the overflight today, uh, you could see this incredible plume coming out of the fissure vents, and uh, we don't want to be in that cloud if we can avoid it. And again, we're, we, we are likely to feel more earthquakes as this event progresses and as the volcano responds to the stresses accumulated during this event. And I think that's all I want to show right now. I'd just like to mention that HVO staff are working, just as a civil defense staff, working really hard to try to find answers for you, to try to characterize and track what's going on so we can give the best information to civil defense so they can make the best decisions on your behalf. Uh, we have several geologists out there right now keeping track of these fissures as they change, sending word of new fissures to civil defense as they find them and relaying any other changes in the behavior that could indicate a change in the type of eruption we're seeing. I think that's all, Talmadge.